In this example, we're asked to determine if the functions are linear. Given the data sets for A, B, and C, we need to look at the relationship between change in Y, change in X, and the ratio of change in Y over change in X to determine if the functions are linear. So what I recommend is that you stop the video and that you draw yourself the tables that I've drawn here because they're not included in your workbook. And then what I'm going to do for each one is to fill out each of the columns. So see how this column is centered between these two uh, columns here. <clears throat> so to compute the change in Y, I'm going to take negative 74 minus negative 110 and then I'm going to write that value in the table here because that's going to be 36. I'm going to do that for each set of intervals all the way across and then we'll see what happens. So now that I've computed the change in Y for each interval and the change in X for each interval, I'm going to divide change in y by change in x for each one. So 36 divided by 3 is 12. 72 divided by 6 is 12. We can see a pattern here. 48 divided by 4 is 12. All of these divisions are 12. Therefore, this data set is linear and it has a slope of 12. I'm going to go on to the next problem and use the same approach to compute delta y, delta x, and then change in y over change in x. To compute delta y for this first interval here, I'm going to take negative 1 minus 5. That gives me negative 6. That's delta y. Delta x is 2 minus a negative 1, which is 2 plus 1, or 3. If I take the fraction, negative 6 divided by 3, I get negative 2. Let's look at the next interval. To find delta y, it's 1 minus a negative 1, which is 1 plus 1, or 2. In the top, 3 minus 2 gives me 1 2 divided by 1 is 2. So already I'm suspecting that this is not going to be linear, but let's check one more set of values. Delta y for this interval, 11 minus 1 is 10. 5 minus 3 for delta x is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So these data are not linear, and we don't need to continue any further with that one. For this last data set, again, I'm going to compute delta y, 27 minus 42 is 15, negative 1 minus a negative 4, let's write that out, is negative 1 plus 4, which is 3, so I'm going to get a ratio of 5. I'm going to do that for the rest of the table, and then we'll see what happens. And actually here on this delta y, it's 27 minus 42, which is a negative 15. That would give me a negative 5. So let's, let's see if we get negative 5 for the remaining ratios for this data set. So if we look at the delta y's for the rest of the table, you can see the values here. The delta x values are here. The ratio of all of those is negative 5. Therefore, we can say that these data are linear and the slope is negative 5. So be sure that you go back and check each one so that you understand where the values came from and understand that it is important to check all of the intervals. So using a table like this will help you tremendously.